This is Twit. So now we're going to 5G. And um, 5G was probably the big banner topic at Mobile World Congress. And when you see things like HoloLens and you see Microsoft talking about cloud, and there, clearly everybody's kind of, to correct me if I'm wrong, Stacey, thinking about 5G, like planning for the future. Yes. The future, though, the road to the future is always bumpy. For instance, T-Mobile has announced that they're going to delay the launch of their 5G uh, technology till later this year, not because their networks aren't ready. There's a there's a glowering John Ledger, uh, but because the phones aren't out there. Right. And that makes sense. Um, yeah, I mean, makes they're doing sense. they're doing a millimeter wave network, and that's the real thing, phones. right? Well, no. Oh, yes, no. So five G. When we talk about like the FCC, when they talk about five G, they're talking about millimeter wave. When a carrier is talking about five G, they might be talking about millimeter wave, but they might also be talking about the three GPP standard for five G. That's the difference so, between a technology and a marketing term. Uh, yeah, I mean, is the FCC using a marketing term? No, they're just allocating spectrum. That, right. That's what they're in. And the 3GPP standard, which in the 3GPP is the organization that governs all of your cellular standards. So that's technology too. I mean, that's a real yeah. spec, right? It's a rate. I mean, it's their radio spec. It's, right. So the really, like, the problem is people like AT&T and Verizon who yes. call things 5G that aren't millimeter wave 5G. They're well, 4G enhanced so or... AT&T is messing this up. Verizon is actually deploying over the millimeter wave spectrum. They're deploying fixed broadband or fixed... For business. Fixed mobile broadband. No, but it's not the same... Wireless. It's not the 3GPP <laughs> standard though, right? Right, because it's not cellular. And I that's see. why... But are they using millimeter wave spectrum? Yes. Okay. And so, so that's why, and you know, you'll get people, the Qualcomm, every time I talk about this, the Qualcomm guys call me and they're like, Stacy, there is a standard and it's the three GPP standard. But, well, that's because they're making the chips for it, right? Right. And that, and that is a standard. So yeah. with, with T-Mobile, they're talking about both things. They're talking about using millimeter wave. They're also talking about phones that use the true cellular 5G radios. So T-Mobile had initially said that they would have 30 cities with 5G by the end of last year. That didn't happen. Phones they thought would launch early this year, like now. Mm. There are phones. You still can't buy them. I was going to say there are. There's, there's The Fold, iPhone. the Galaxy Fold, which will be av uh, available for order April 26th, is 5G. Samsung also has a 5G S10. They haven't announced availability for that. There, You could buy a Moto X that has the promise of a 5G back, but there's no 5G back yet. And some of these phones announced at Mobile World Congress, I guess, will be 5G. Are well, you saying that we don't have, is the technology, the technology is, is settled, right? It's not that they're not, do they lack the chips? Is that the problem? No, no, the technology is settled. They just, they're deploying the network. So you have to, I mean, you have to get the networks out it's there. It's a chicken and an egg. I understand. And you need a phone and you need a network. You also need a business case. And for a while, the carriers were kind of like, we're going to do this, but nobody really wanted it. No one wanted to upgrade. Look at the the upgrade cycles on handsets now are like at three years. That's slowed it down, hasn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. Although really you could harder. make the case that that's one thing that will get people back in. If you're suddenly, if you have a phone that can go five times faster. But it's unclear how much this is going to affect your overall performance uh, because we don't have a huge use case. Like remember when we went to LTE, that was in the midst of the iPhone sucking up everybody's data right. and everyone's like, ah. So but when the, right when now, the, when the, when the, when the FCC or the three GPP talk about nominal speeds for 5G, that's if no one else is competing for that bandwidth at the head end. Well, okay. It depends on, it depends on a couple things. If you're talking about millimeter wave band, you can, there's a lot of capacity available. So because these bands are really fat, you're looking at like 100 megahertz of spectrum all in one chunk that you could use to like just gigabits of data, right? So that's one thing. The radio, the 3GPP radio spec talks about using those bands, 
But it also works in <laughs> other bands. And you're going to see like AT&T deploy over non-millimeter wave bands. You're going to see Verizon actually do that too because millimeter wave bands perform horribly when going through buildings and that right. sort of thing. So you're going to need so to high up. frequency they get stopped by anything and they don't and they don't propagate very far either. Yeah. So what you're going to see is kind of a blend of all of these technologies and they're going to be organized and optimized on the carrier side, but they are going to be you're only going to have you're only going to have what you need when you need it, if that makes sense. It's not going to, not everyone's going to have this massive gigabit okay. connection. So that explains. So uh, The Verge is quoting Sprint CTO John Saw, who uh, was talking about this at, at, at Mobile World Congress. He said, uh, in one demo video they ran, somebody was shown getting 430 megabits per second, which is nice, right? 430 yeah. megabits. But Saw said, we don't really want to focus too much on speeds. But the experience, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that means. What? How is the experience of 5G different if you're not talking about it's faster? Latency. Well, that's what I wanted to ask. Is, so, is, I'm, I'm thinking about just just enough lanes on the highway, if you will. If, if I'm out at a football game or what have you, and it's a LTE area, and there's 200,000 people within a five-mile radius, my phone is just going to struggle when it comes to getting data. Is this the benefit of having 5G? Is this, is this a bigger highway or, or what? So if you, if you stick with the highway analogy, capacity, which is what we're talking about when we talk about things like 438 megabits per second down, so that's capacity. So that means everybody can, you know, you've got that much data can flow through that particular imaginary pipe because it's wireless all right and so if you have lots of people it's a fat highway lots of cars can still have a whole megabit to themselves right now 5g where it really excels and where we're seeing a lot of emphasis from the carriers is on latency so not only is the highway bigger but i guess your car can speed faster is maybe the way to think about that but it's lower latency which will give you a better experience in some things all right so where what so um Data calls, database data calls, calls, right? Void. Uh, your car, getting back and forth to the cloud. You need low, low like, latency if you're using the cloud during your self-driving Yeah, vehicle. or things even like speech recognition that's, look at me in my phone. This is my phone hand. <laughs> I did this with a small child, like a four-year-old. Wow. And I'm like, hey, ring, ring. And she's looking at me and I'm like, it's a phone. And she's like... <laughs> Hello. She, that's really interesting. This no longer. She's doing for those of you just listening the you know the hang loose bra Hawaiian thing with the pinky and the thumb. It's the universal gesture for. Yeah, I'm holding call, it to my my, call me. my thumbs by my ear, my I, pinkies by my hand. But what you're pointing out is that no kid would recognize that as a phone call because that's not how that doesn't look like anything they've got. Wow. So yes, we, now that, we're going to be going. Much. We'll be going. Call me with the hands folding. Call me. <laughs> call me. Um, okay, sorry. That was a total total digression from latency. But um, and think about it like we always talk about it in like gaming. But your your ADAS systems, also things like uh, industrial IoT. They're looking at that. They're one of the things at uh, Mobile World Congress was Qualcomm and Bosch got together and they're like, we're going to do research on not this generation of five G, but five G NR for the industrial IoT. And that is like super focused on low latency and uses something called deterministic networking. So there's a there's a lot of flavors here with 5G. And one of the reasons is because so many industries need better broadband. So you're going to have 5G for industrial. You're going to have 5G for cars. Right. You're going to have. Yeah. And I think there are a lot of it. Somebody in our chat room said a lot of people looking at it and saying, hmm, maybe I can replace my Internet service, my landline-based internet service with 5G if it's fast. And that's what, yeah, Verizon's doing. Right. Um, Sprint says they will launch their 5G network this May, just took a few months off, in Atlanta, Chicago, Dallas, and Kansas City. Now, when this happens, right, it's not the whole, it's not all of Dallas, it's parts of, it's whatever, you have to be in the right Dal area. Dallas is a huge area. You know this, <laughs> Stacey, because you were promised a lot in Austin and got none of it. <laughs> Google Fiber didn't reach your curb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still sad about that. Five uh, G will it come to Houston, to LA, too. New York, Phoenix, and Washington by the first half of the year. Here, here, where Charlotte? 
Yeah, well, not 5G, but the Google Fiber um, right. discussion. They were supposed to be here in Charlotte, and uh, yeah, that hasn't been working out so well. They got a lot yeah. of red tape. If you don't have it now, out. you ain't getting it. I got bad news for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Google's pretty much given up on that. Um, so Sprint will have 5G this year in a lot of uh, markets. Uh, again, you'll have to have a phone. You'll have to find a phone that works with 5G. Here's the good news, at least for me as a Google Fi subscriber, and maybe some of you are, Sprint said its 5G network will be part of Google Fi. Um, so you'd need a Fi phone that's 5G compatible. It's not clear if that's going to that's gonna happen. Sprint's marketing chief also said early Sprint 5G phones, this might be a reason not to rush to get a 5G phone, early Sprint 5G phones may not be compatible across networks. That's because there's not like a unified, like we're not sure what, like Timo is doing, I think, 600 megahertz and something else spectrum for their 5G network. Uh, AT&T, everybody is doing different. Sprint doesn't network. have the spectrum, doesn't have that super high frequency spectrum. They weren't Well, they don't need it. They can deploy it over. They're going to put it on low. their mid-band spectrum. Yeah. Uh, is that CDMA stuff still out there in the wild? Yes. CDMA still is. is still out in the wild. My Verizon phone still will fail over to CDMA network really? every now and then. I think yeah. so. I, I, Sometimes, like I thought Verizon when, did, but I wasn't one hundred percent sure. Sprint and Verizon were CDMA networks, but it's kind of like when you when you get in a bad area and you just you go down to three G. You go to from LTE <laughs> to three G <laughs> to two G <laughs> to no G. Is there two G? I don't know. Maybe not. But they slowly start. There is this kind of lagging tail that they slowly get rid of over time. Yeah, I know that a couple carriers have gotten rid of their two G yeah. or have announced sunsets yeah. for it. But yeah, Sprint uh, says they will launch on this mid-band spectrum, which is faster than LTE waves, doesn't travel as far, sl which, by the way, it's slower than millimeter wave, but travels farther. Mm -hmm. And Sprint also says it'll rely on massive MIMO to improve its network capacity. Multi in, yeah, multi and that's out. another. So that's another issue because you can massive MIMO is basically the number of antennas you have right. in your handset. You have to have it on your handset, and you have to have it on the the tower or wherever your base station is. Okay. And in phones today, we're at are we at two, four by two, maybe four by four, and I don't see a lot of devices, especially handsets, getting like no. 16 by 16 There's MIMO. There's not a lot of room for that. You've seen these massively MIMO, you know, the Moo MIMO uh, Wi-Fi routers. They look like spiders. Yeah, yeah they're crazy big. Yeah. And I mean, it's cool for a gateway, for example, if you want to stick something out in the middle of a field or, you know, maybe on top of a car or an ambulance. But, but not, I mean... This was, it's like satellite all over again. Sprint <laughs> says it will launch the 5G hotspots. So you're going to see, I think everybody do that. That's what Verizon's doing right now. And that's for home and office, uh, not for mobile. So really, this is a mess. It's not a mess. It's just, we're call, we're using the phrase 5G to mean like three different things. Right. <laughs> right. It's confusing to consumers, that's for sure. It yeah. is, but, you know, consumers... We're not all yeah. Hermione. Well, no, and consumers, you know, I, I wouldn't buy. So here's here's my take for your consumer take. I wouldn't buy a 5G phone expecting anything awesome, nor would you need it anytime this year and probably well into next. At the end of 2020, if you wanted to upgrade you're going to get something out of it. But I don't think this year you're going to get a lot out of having a quote-unquote 5G phone. And see, I was thinking earlier with my whole power user um, discussion, it was. I th it seems like the 5G talk is still marketing speak and, and marketing towards people being able to quote-unquote do more, you know, as right. if yeah, they use their is. phones to do everything. Yeah. And no, I think not if you were market. buying 5G for... Fixed wireless, I think that's something you could buy today. And within the next year, like if you hate your cable provider, it's going to provide another option for Good. cable, basically. Good. Um, okay. But it, it'll be from someone like Verizon. <laughs> so you're like, right. it still will be somebody you hate, but it just. It, <laughs> a different someone you hate. It'll be just different someone you hate. All right. So, so there's the 5G yeah. explainer. It was, a, you know, it was all over Mobile World Congress. But uh, again, this is, you know, it's up in the air. As to how this is going to come out and how it's Thank you, Miss Stacy. Yes. Thank you. You got to stop calling me Miss Stacy. Hermione Higginbotham. 
throwing me out there, man. Hermione, One, I'm married. Herm Two, Ms. Ms. Stacy. Ms. Stacy.